Look what we've got! Ah, tickets to cats! We saw it last night. Okay, do you like cats actually? I mean, the real animal. Um, I'm not really an animal person because I never grew up with pets. I love cats. I used mm. to have a cat. Alright, back to this cat. Okay, we saw it last night. It was good. Well, for a musical that's just based on a collection of poems, it shouldn't work on paper, but somehow it just worked. And, and over 20 over years since it was first stage, it still works. So, Cats is a... Uh... You have something to say about the poems when it first came out for Cats. Yes, actually there's a article that came out in The Guardian, which is a UK newspaper on their website, where this scholar who studies cats in literature was saying that at the time when T.S. Eliot publishes the poem about cats, a lot of people find that it was a terrible timing because it was in the middle of the war. And so, at the time, a lot of people were even thinking of euthanizing their animals because they were lack of resources. So it was such a terrible time. But the scholar then went on to say that if you look at you know, the various cats that were presented, even the so-called good cats were actually you know, gangsters, you know, making a mess of everything, not to mention <laughs> the supervillain, McCavity. And so it actually reflected uh, the chaos of the time, even though it was meant for children. And when Cats premiered as a musical in the 1980s, there were riots in certain parts of Britain. So beyond the glitz and glamour and energy, actually it does reflect the chaos of the time. I don't know why Cats works so well. It's like the longest running, one of the longest running shows. Yeah. I think a lot of people do not realise that it's really a dance musical. So you, you really have to like be a ballet dancer or a, a, a dancer to, to appreciate uh, it in all its beauty. Uh, but it works. Uh, I don't know. I think it appeals to different people. Some people hate it, some people love it. Yeah, because of the lack of a strong plot. Because yeah. it's just a collection of poems where different cats either present themselves or they present talk about other cats. We need a cat gang or the jellical cats, you know. I think many of the individual songs work very well because the tunes are great. My favourite is actually the McCavity duet. <laughs> I yeah. always look forward to it because I think it's very sassy. I love the choreography. I, I love it every time it comes on. That's, that's my thing. It's groundbreaking in many ways because Cats was one of the first mega musicals that went on to have like various associate companies touring concurrently. And so because of Cats' success, then you have stuff like Phantom of the Opera, Les Mis, and all that. And in itself, since its premiere, you don't have another musical that actually takes the text from a collection of poems into a musical. Or at least there are no other musicals that made it as, as big as Cats or that we know today. And Andrew Lloyd also combines a lot of elements like the musical reviews, a bit of cabaret, especially with the McCavity song. When you say cabaret, I, I see why it makes sense. Yeah. Because it's like a big variety show. Yeah. <laughs> People in, in great costumes and then doing all the individual songs. There's, yeah. there's a kind of song for everybody. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's right. And, and all the props and everything. You know, this is the third cats I've seen in Singapore. I'm sure that must have been the fourth one, maybe. Maybe I missed one. Uh, I think they changed a little bit here and there. Like, I think the. What's the song with the train thing? Skimple Bangs? Something? Um. <laughs> We check People, it out. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, they provided a nice little booklet to show <laughs> the various characters. Okay, uh, Skimbo yes. Shanks. Skimbo okay. Shanks. <laughs> yeah, the train. The train. I remember in the previous two productions, the the trains <clears throat> actually moved. Ah, oh, yeah. Of yeah, course, for this one, you were. And this one, yeah, they didn't move. You were static, and so yeah. then, then the cats were just moving the wheels yeah, on yeah. the spot. <laughs> yeah, so. And they did have this multicolor um, material thing covering the train before, ah. which which they have this time. Okay, yeah, because this is my first time watching Cats, the only other exposure to Cats was a VCD production of many years ago. VCD? Yeah, so... You still have it? Yeah, I still have it, so... Yeah, I mean... I have the DVD version. Yeah. Gosh, it's older than me and he has a DVD version. Uh, I still have the DVD version. <laughs> I, I think the dancing for yeah. me is great because I love dancing. I mean, I used, used to dance. <laughs> yeah. Operative <Cool>. word. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they pull out every stop. I mean, the, my favourite character for dancing was Mr. Mistopheles. Yeah, I guess it. With the number. great multiple uh, period in Alasacon. <laughs> He's doing it the whole time, so many times, ending with multiple turns and everything. And, and the whole show, they pull up all the stops in ballet. It's, it's beautiful. And what they have one up on 
most of the other musicals which are not really the full dancing musical type there's a lot of body language used yeah. in what they express which which you don't find in the other musicals when they want to sing something or say something everybody is like oh like that like that whatever it was right <laughs> it was yeah i love it <laughs> and they actually use a lot of traditional ballet vocabulary but they tweak it to fit uh, the body language of a cat you see so i think that presents a challenge i think it's really a dancer's dream because you can do all the exciting part of ballet without the, the, the boring love and they bits. all sing really well yeah so, they all sing really well so if you're a dancer who can sing and act that's a dream musical to go for yes <laughs> back to the source material for a bit um well i talk about the background and how it reflects the chaos of time but for me it also presents especially because it was the poems of man for children it also presents bits of London, like you, like Skimble Shanks, you see the train which was a great feature of London and then you see you know the upper class cat, the Bustopher Jones. So it, it does present to children, you know, the microcosm of British society and you know it's a great introduction to various parts of England as well and that's what I got out of it and then later I found out about you know how it reflects the uh, chaos of time. I can't help but compare a little bit uh, with previous shows I've seen. I think the, the comic timing in some of the instances were slightly lacking because like you know the first song where they threw the giant shoe down I think in the... <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's alright, it's, it's annoying by now so yeah. yeah. Uh, I think in previous pro production they, they gasp for, for a longer time and just a split second more makes a big difference. The Ram Tam Tam okay. song, the last part where the three cats were meowing for him, right? So the last one did a really long meow, but this one didn't do it long enough. Yeah, they're so, not as crazy for the ladies, man. Yeah, maybe it's <laughs> as just they should me. Be, maybe. Yeah. Other than that, it's, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. Go yeah. up, come and see it. <laughs> it runs to the 5th of January, so you could watch it for Christmas or New Year or whatever, and it's a great fun for the whole family. I love cats. And the animal. I love the musical. <laughs>